down, 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 down. Pretty good. So if you're looking to build an affordable superbike, maybe look no further. This might be the video for you. Today we're going to be building up this Yoleo R12 Aero frame uh, into a full bike together with an L2 ERX electronic group set. And uh, yeah, as I was riding that bike already last year, it was my main bike for the summer last year. I just had to disassemble it because I needed the group set for my winter bike, but now it's coming back. I really, really loved it. I took it on a cycling vacation to Mallorca as well. And uh, yes, this is kind of become the foundation for all my measurements in regards to um, all my other bikes that I'm currently riding. So if riding a premium feeling product for not premium budget, if that is your thing, stay tuned and uh, let's get building. So on one hand, the great thing about this frame is that it's going to be fully internally rooted. So there are not going to be any visible cables on the outside. It's going to look super slick, super clean and going to be a little bit more aero than having cables floating around. But the downside is that it is a little bit more of a pain when setting it up for the first time, routing all those cables and hoses through here. The upside with electronic shifting though is that you actually only have the brake hoses coming from the handlebars into the frame and uh, yeah, then the rest is kind of like semi-wireless uh, for the shifter so you only have to place the battery um, in the seat post and then go directly to the front and rear derailleur so that should be a little bit easier than setting it up with uh, a mechanical group set but it's also designed to work with a mechanical group set might be a little bit more of a pain to set it up but uh, would totally work with the frame. So the L2 group set came with two uh, brakes with attached hoses to it. One of the hoses is longer, the other one is shorter. We're gonna now start with mounting the brake to the fork. And for that, we are obviously gonna use the one with the shorter hose because it only needs to go through the fork. The longer hose needs to go all the way from the handlebar down to the rear brake. Before we're gonna screw this in, we're quickly gonna route the hose actually through the fork so there is a little hole in the fork and we're basically just going to push the hose through until it comes out here at the top of the fork just we're going to pull it through here and now we can start mounting this so but before mounting uh, the front brake the L2 set came with a lot of adapters and as I'm planning to have a 160 millimeter rotor in the front, 140 millimeter rotor in the back, I need to use one of their adapters. It says uh, 160 up and front, so I kind of know that uh, it's for a 160 millimeter rotor. Um, it is for the front brake and it needs to be mounted this way. After pushing the hose through, I now have uh, the brake hanging here and now I'm gonna first attach the adapter to the fork. So for this, I'm gonna be attaching the adapter this way. Add the screws that came with it. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna tighten it to, let me see. There isn't any spec on here, so I'm gonna tighten it to five Newton meters, hoping that that's gonna be good enough like five that's solid now we're gonna attach the actual brake to um, to this adapter for this I'm gonna be using those shorter screws that also came with it so now let's place the brake on the adapter there we go put the screws in second one so let's tighten these up a bit for now, I'm just going to go hand tight because later on we will have to um, adjust the position of those brakes anyways to center um, them properly to the discs. So just mounting them in a way that they don't really fall off and that they don't rattle around too much while we're setting up the rest. So yeah, that's good enough. It still, still has some movement uh, on the adapter. Just make sure that the adapter itself isn't moving. For the rear brake, we're going to be using this adapter, which says rear and 140 because in the rear i'm gonna have a 140 millimeter rotor um, so let's attach this uh, adapter plate first real quick so first little problem the issue that i see with this adapter when i place it here is that it is barely 
but it is touching um, the frame here. So I would worry that if I tighten it a little bit too much, maybe it's going to press against the frame or um, it's going to be basically going to be rubbing off the paint in this position. Uh, and also here, depending on how far I need to move this to later align uh, the rotors, it is also touching the inside of the frame. So I quickly spoke with uh, the guys from L2 and they said to just add a little washer uh, in between the adapter and the frame just to keep the frame protected. Shouldn't be an issue with braking performance. So uh, let's find out. So let me first put the screw through. I'm gonna add a little washer here. Let me also push this screw through and add a little washer here. Now we're gonna add the adapter with the print to be towards the outside. Let's screw it in by hand real quick just to grab the adapter with the screw. Okay, and now we can get the torque wrench and tighten the screws. These also don't need to be super tight right now because as with the front, we're gonna be adjusting them um, to center the, the brake to the rotor as well. But now when we have a look, nothing is touching um, the frame. So next thing we're gonna do is um, we're gonna now take the rear brake and then guide the cable through the rear chainstay, push it all the way up through um, the down tube and hope that it's gonna come out in the head tube without too much uh, effort. Okay, so first of all, this is where the brake hose needs to go through. So we're gonna be pushing the cable through here. Already first resistance. Let's see if we can feel it on the inside now. Give it a couple of tries and that unblocked itself, nice. We're gonna try to pick it up from the bottom bracket area and guide it into the down tube and then keep pushing until it hopefully comes out. Yeah, there it is, out of the head tube. Perfect. That was easier than I thought. So now we can attach the rear brake to the adapter. There you go. We're gonna use those uh, shorter screws that also came with the set and attach them here. Let's now make sure that when I'm attaching this, that this screw is not gonna come out here from the bottom, scratching the frame. So let's watch out for that while screwing it in, but that looks good. Nothing sticking out. I'm actually gonna properly torque this up now. Okay. Okay, that's torqued up pretty good. Okay, now we're gonna put on the handlebars and uh, route all the cables through it. I got two options. I got a fully integrated handlebar stem combo, which is the one that came with the bike like one and a half years ago. Looks great, is great, feels great, but routing cables through this is not the most um, exciting thing you can do um, because it's all one and you need to go through those tight corners and everything. But Yuleo was so kind to send over their new uh, stem and arrow handlebar combo, which is also capable of routing everything fully internal. You see a little hole here and uh, everything basically gonna be routed through here as well. Um, it is called the S1 and H11. Um, they just arrived today. So uh, I'm very much looking forward to uh, check out how uh, routing is gonna work with this two component uh, setup because I assume that it's gonna be way easier than working with a fully integrated handlebar. So just for the ones who are interested, uh, weight-wise, the fully integrated one with uh, this upfront mount is uh, 390 grams versus uh, the two-piece setup being 420 grams uh, with those uh, cable guides that are now floating in here, but without upfront mount at the moment. Not a massive difference in weight. Um, also with this build, I'm not really going for weight optimizations because it's more of an aero frame that I'm gonna be using on the flats mainly. So, um, but yeah, thought it might be interesting for some. So now let's go. One more small thing before we put uh, the fork in is that as this cable is going through um, the down tube, it can get rattly quite quickly. So there are those foam tubes um, that you can buy um, for a couple of euros um, 
which are gonna go on top of the hose so they're gonna isolate the sound and uh, hopefully avoid any rattling within the frame of the naked uh, brake hose touching the carbon from the inside. So we're quickly gonna put those on and push it through. That's already good enough. Fantastic. Okay, so before we assemble everything, we're gonna need some smaller pieces like this little thing um, that mounts pretty much on top here into, um, into the bearing. And we're gonna route the cables that are coming from the, from the rear brake and from the front brake. They're gonna go into this little area here. So when you're moving and uh, turning the handlebars, they're kind of protected from being like squished or uh, anything. We're now quickly gonna mount, route the fork through from the bottom. First, we're gonna take the brake hose from the front fork, guide it through here as well. Push it up from the bottom. There we go. And now we wanna make sure that the cables are sitting in front, uh, in front of the fork. So now we're gonna take this little part and we're gonna route uh, the two brake hoses through it. So let me do this real quick here. Fantastic. And pointing to the front. There we go. That looks good. And then there's this little, this little metal ring. And there's this little metal ring that comes with it that basically just sits uh, and goes over the fork uh, itself. So we place this on top of here. There we go. Nice, done. So one thing that I forgot to mention is as I was riding that frame last year, um, I left the bearing uh, down here and up here in the frame. Um, before I stored that frame away, I cleaned obviously those bearings and re-greased them again, so they were nice and fresh. But uh, yeah, in case you're building this uh, from scratch, there would be these two pieces. One with a red ring, one with uh, a black ring. So the red one goes uh, in down here and the black one comes in up here and basically the way they're mounted is that on one side one side is flat and one side has this little angle and basically the bottom part goes in like this with the angled part up for upward facing and the one that's coming in from the top is basically just mounted exactly the other way around so with the angled part in pointing uh, to the frame. Okay, so now we're gonna add some finishing touches. So there, first of all, there is this uh, cosmetic, I would say, end cap that's going on top of here. And then we have a couple of uh, thin spacers uh, that are going on top of it with uh, this little end cap that kind of makes um, the stem look nicely integrated. So let's quickly uh, put these on. I'm gonna take this little plastic hamburger and um, yeah, mount it, try to mount it all together. First of all, we gotta route the brake hoses through here as well. So we take the two, route them through here, and then make sure that they're not crossing. Yeah, and now push it onto the fork. There we go, nice and clean. Now we're gonna add the stem to it. So for the stem, the cables are gonna go into those two holes up here and gonna come out uh, here in the front. So I'm gonna unscrew the front plate of the stem. There we go. So here you see where the cables are gonna come out. We're gonna route the brake hose through the corresponding openings in the stem, the left cable to the left side, the right cable to the right side. There we go. And now we're gonna push it onto the fork. There we go. That is looking pretty good and was so far way easier than doing it with a fully integrated handlebar. Okay, so now let me show you one cool thing that L2 did is, um, let me see if you can see this. There we go. So the end parts of the brake hoses have this little metal piece here, which exactly fits a brake or shift cable 
end. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be routing a shift cable through that little hole, pull it all the way through until it stops here. And now we're going to take this little end of the shift cable to route it through the handlebars. So basically into that hole and out of these outer holes, which should be way easier with this thin uh, shift cable compared than uh, going through it with the thick hose. So let's give this a try. This is now attached to the right uh, brake hose. So we're gonna try to route it to the right hand side. So let me go through this hole first and then let's see if we can catch it on this side. Yeah, I can see it here. I would just need something to grab it. Let me get something pointy. Let me get it here, push it through. There we go. Here comes the cable. So now we just pull it all the way through. Keep pushing. There we go. And it's coming out here already. So now we can pull out the shift cable. And we're gonna do the same on the left hand side. There's the cable. Let's see if I can grab it. Lost it again. Here's where the fishing begins. But here at least you see the light at the end of the tunnel while with a fully integrated handlebar, you sometimes lose your patience. We got it. So now we just need to pull it through. So now we can pull out the shift cable and retire that one. Okay, so let's quickly pull the cables through and then let's attach the front plate. So I'm pushing these through. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good right now. So now we can attach the front plate. So even though this has a nice sandpaper kind of structure, we're still gonna add a little bit of uh, carbon grip paste to it. Um, just that we don't have to add uh, so much torque when putting everything together. So let me add a little bit of that carbon grip paste. A little bit here on the inside. And then a little bit on the front where the front plate's gonna go. So now we can add the front plate. Let's push this one in. So while still not all the bolts are fully torqued up, we can still play around with the angle here a little bit and make sure that it's properly centered. I'd say that this looks pretty good to me. Yeah, I'd say that's nicely centered. Let's torque up those bolts. So just from experience, I mounted a lot of other uh, stem carbon handlebar combinations with around four to five newton meters on here. So I'm gonna go with four and a half for this one to play it safe. So let's bring it back in position. Four and a half. Fantastic. That's looking pretty good. So let's finish it off with this nice one piece top cap from Yuleo. So it states a maximum of uh, five newton meters. Um, I'm gonna set my torque wrench to four and let's see how that's gonna work. It's very important that these screws are not tightened, otherwise this top cap is basically just gonna be pressing against uh, the stem. So keep these loose. So actually uh, tightening that top cap is gonna compress everything nicely together. So let's screw it in. Make sure that everything stays nicely aligned here. I can feel that things are being compressed. Okay. Okay, now we actually got four. See here, the click. Fantastic. So for now, we're not tightening those bolts. We're gonna tighten them at the very end once we have uh, the wheels in so we can properly align and uh, center the handlebar to the wheels and then we're gonna um, tighten up those screws to specification. Okay, next thing, I think we're ready to um, attach the shifters. 
cut the hose to lengths and uh, attach them to the shifters. And then we can move over to uh, bringing in the front and rear derailleurs. For this step, we got those beautiful L2 ERX shifters. There you go. Which uh, we now gonna attach to the handbar. So first of all, we gotta loosen up the clamp a little bit. Um, for that, we're pulling back the rubber hood and try to locate this little screw here. And then we basically gotta dig in here to that screw and loosen it a bit so we can easily attach it to the handlebar. So let's see if that's already good enough. Let's put it on here, yeah, that looks good. So for now, we're just gonna roughly tighten it up so that it doesn't move around too much. Um, but then afterwards, we'll properly adjust it and level it with the left hand side as well. The nice thing about this handbar, which is gonna make it very easy to level um, those two shifters left and right is that it has those little indicators here. So we'll be basically able to uh, just look on the other side, count the amount of um, offline. So one, two, three, I guess there's another one here. And it's the fifth one actually here in the center in between that space um, of the clamp. So this is gonna be exactly the area where we're gonna mount the other shifter as well. So let's take the other shifter, hood peeled back already, and now moving it up here and we start tightening the bolt. Okay, so now it's time to cut the brake hoses and um, yeah, enter the exciting adventure of uh, assembling a hydraulic uh, shifting system. So let's go. What we're gonna do now is this little uh, brake hose that's coming through here. We need to cut that to length and um, yeah, assemble it and uh, connect it to the shifter. So for this, we're gonna peel back the rubber hood, which is gonna expose the connector port, which is gonna be this one. So this is basically where we're gonna be attaching the brake hose to. You might be asking, hey Michael, how am I gonna attach this brake hose to this port? Looking at this, it looks like kind of a threaded system and there isn't any thread on here. So, glad you ask. There are those little parts and components. Let me show you. This part here, um, which was also part of the part of the L2 system, this basically just goes on top of the brake hose. Then there are a couple of other parts, which I'm gonna show you now in a second. And um, with this, we're basically gonna be attaching uh, the hose to uh, the port itself. So first of all, before we do this, we want to hold on to the hose and move the handlebar completely to the right and completely to the left, just to see if there's any tension in the system, basically while we're uh, moving to the extremes, if this is kind of like pulling in um, the hose here. So that's something that we want to avoid because we don't, we want to avoid now cutting the hose to length and then it being so short that the moment you start uh, turning your handlebars that you kind of get resistance because now you're suddenly stretching or pulling um, on the hose itself. But here everything's fine, it's not the case, nothing is moving um, in regards to the hose when I'm moving the handlebars, so I think we're good to cut it in a second. First of all, there is a little um, end plug on here, so we're gonna loosen that up and then uh, we're gonna measure where we're gonna cut the hose. Okay, that's the end plug. Then what we're gonna do is this hose kind of needs to go all the way into, into this little port here. So we kind of need to cut it appropriately. So I would say measure twice, cut once. I think it's ra let's rather cut it a tiny bit, like a millimeter or two too long than a millimeter or two too short. So I'm gonna just push this in here a little bit into the handlebars and I would say we're gonna cut it somewhere here. Then for this cutting action, you kind of need a special tool. I think I at least haven't done it with anything else. Um, this is by a company called Jackwire, who also does uh, brake hoses and, um, and uh, brake and shifting cable and outer housing sets. Uh, they have this little cutting thing and you see like a little guillotine cutting through here. Uh, and this is how we're gonna be cutting the hose. So we put this here on the point where we want to cut it and we push it together 
There we go. Now it's cut. So now there are the other two components which I wanted to mention. So there is something called, I think, a pin. So that's basically just going to go into the end of the hose. So that's going to be basically pushed in there. And then on top of it, there's going to be this thing, which is called an olive. Um, and I think I tried it already. I tried it already on another system. I think these are also replaceable with the original Shimano parts. So if you just, I don't know, if you are rebuilding or moving the group set to another bike and you need replacement parts, um, I just uh, set up another bike with uh, a manual uh, L2 setup as well. Um, and there I was just using the original Shimano parts and it seemed like everything's working. So I think uh, these are interchangeable. So how this works, we basically just gonna put this on top of the hose and then when we screw everything together with this thing that's basically sitting on top of the hose, this is now as a system kind of going into uh, the shifter and when you screw this in, this little olive is gonna get crushed and expand kind of and create this way uh, an airtight seal so that no oil can spill around it. And uh, yeah, that's basically how you um, get your uh, hydraulic system working. So to push this little pin in uh, into the hose, I think there are multiple solutions for this. There is either like a little block kind of thing where you put the hose in between and then you uh, add the pin and then you use a hammer and hammer it in. Or there's again a tool by this Jaguar company again where you just clamp the hose in. You have this little, this little pin pusher here, which then basically just helps you to push the pin uh, into the hose. So, I mean, Sounds kind of difficult when I'm trying to explain it, but let me quickly show you. We're gonna just push the pin into the, into the hole in the front, just that it doesn't fall out. And then we're gonna be using this little tool. We're gonna squeeze in the hose this way. And now we're gonna push the pin in with this little I don't know how you're gonna call it. You know what I mean though. So I'm gonna push it all the way in. There we go, that looks pretty good. Okay. So then we put the olive on top, which is quite a tight fit. Okay. So maybe it would have made more sense to actually put the olive on first and then put the pin in. Um, but yeah, it's still possible to do this. And then we need to get everything pushed into the connector port itself. There we go. We need to make sure that the hose is pushed in all the way. So I like to thread this in by hand first, just to avoid any cross threading, because then we kind of feel if it's going in the wrong way. That's going in quite smoothly. And now I can feel a little bit of resistance already. So now we need our little tools here. And we basically now are gonna screw this in and crush that little olive and create this airtight seal. So, so the nice thing here in comparison to a Shimano system is that we're screwing metal into metal. Uh, what's a little bit different on the Shimano system is that you're screwing this metal part into a plastic housing and if you're screwing it, it a little bit too tightly um, or too much then um, the plastic housing can break. It did happen to me um, I think on a Ultegra or even the Durace shifter so quite an expensive mistake to make but uh, yeah here I feel way safer because we screw metal into metal so nothing should really be breaking here. Okay, that seems pretty tight. And then we can peel back the hoods. And this side is done. So now I'm gonna be doing the same thing on this side. That should be it. You can peel back the hoods, the rubber, and uh, yeah, I think we're good to go when it comes to that setup. Okay, so that's done so far. Later on, we're gonna have to um, bleed the whole system, which basically just means filling in mineral oil into the setup that there are no air bubbles in there. 
um, but it should be fairly easy, especially if the system came already with a bunch of oil, I guess, in the shifters and also in the hose of the brakes that have been connected to them. Um, but yeah, let's keep that one rather towards the end. And uh, next thing I would say, let's attach front and rear derailleur. So let's quickly talk about um, the wireless shifting part. So we're going to be mounting the rear derailleur, the front derailleur and the battery, which is very important. Um, so the shifters communicate wirelessly with, I think, the rear derailleur, which is, I think, the brain of the whole setup, which also makes sense why it's so chunky. Um, these two are connected with two wires to uh, this battery, which is going to be sitting in uh, the seat post. And um, yeah, basically there are going to be two wires coming down from the battery in the seat post, one to the front and one to the rear derailleur. So we're first going to attach uh, those two units and then we're going to be routing um, the power cables from the battery to front and rear. Okay, so this is maybe going to be one of the most straightforward parts of the setup. So we're going to be taking the front derailleur, removing the screw, the mounting screw here. And we're going to be attaching it to the front derailleur mount. Crazy, huh? I'm just going to roughly screw this in so it's not rattling around or falling off. So we're not going to be fully torquing this screw up because depending on which crank set you're using, so once we have the bottom bracket in and the crank set applied to it, we'll have to shift this up and down because depending basically on the size you're riding, if you're riding like a 50 millimeter, 52 or whatever size, you want to have a one millimeter gap basically between uh, this lower edge and the teeth. Um, and yeah, basically that's what we're going to be adjusting afterwards once we have everything mounted in front. Before attaching the rear derailleur here, we're going to grease this thread nicely up so nothing can get seized in here. Um, if we at some point want to uh, remove the rear derailleur, swap it out, service it or whatever. In here from both sides. Then, now looking at this part and especially this little nose up here, what you want to make sure is that this little piece is sitting on top of that, on top of that little nose up here. We can actually torque this up already. It says 10 to 12 newton meters, so let's do this as well. And there we go. Okay, so setup wise, this might be a little bit complicated now because what I have to do is I actually have to get the seat post out and uh, get the battery in here and then start routing the wires down here into, um, yeah, into the front derailleur and to the rear derailleur but I'm clamped onto the seat post. So I'll try to get this frame out now and basically just hang it on top of here around this area. Okay, so the way I'm gonna be trying to set this up now is I'm gonna attach the cables first to the rear derailleur, then to the front derailleur, push them through the frame, um, hopefully let gravity do uh, the most of the work. And then once they're floating around here in the bottom bracket area, I'm just gonna flip the frame around and hope that gravity then again is gonna guide them down um, down the seat tube. So let's give it a try. So in the set uh, with the shifters, there's one long and one short data cable. We're gonna start with the long data cable, which obviously goes to the rear derailleur because there is a way longer distance to, um, to the battery. There we go, cable is plugged in. Some resistance, let's see. Oh, it's already here. Fantastic, so we can pull it through. We attach that rubber part and we have the cable floating around here out of the bottom bracket area. So now we're gonna do the same thing for the front derailleur. So there are two connector ports or openings in the frame here. One here basically behind this part that you can't really see and one down here. Unfortunately, the connector port is right here so basically the cable is going to go in here which makes this connector port be right below it pretty perfect location wise the problem is that it is a tiny bit too small to fit um, the cable through it because it is made for um, basically if you're using mechanical shifting so we have to go through this port down here 
um, unfortunately. I think it's still gonna work, but uh, it's just not gonna be as nice because I guess this frame was more designed with um, either, either a, a SRAM or a Shimano front derailleur in uh, mind, where I think on a Shimano front derailleur the connector is basically on this side, where here it then kind of makes sense position-wise. So let's take this rubber part out first. It's a rubber that's kind of like cut, cut open. So we basically can just push the cable through and then just wrap um, and then just wrap this around um, the cable itself. Now we're gonna connect the cable to the front derailleur first. And then we're gonna take the cable and push it through here. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip the frame around and um, hope that gravity is gonna help me to get those wi wires um, down the seat tube. So I quickly removed uh, the seat post and uh, yeah, flipped the frame upside down. So now we have those two wires that are coming out of uh, the bottom bracket area. And now what I'm gonna try to do is one by one to push them down the seat tube and hope they're gonna come out of here. So let's try. Oh, I can actually see it. So maybe I can actually just grab it with um, with a little tool. So here I have this like old um, shift cable outer housing. I'm basically just gonna try to fish this out with it. You gotta get creative sometimes. There it is. So let's see if the second one's gonna be as easy as that. So let's take the second one and also guide it through the seat tube. Yeah, so this one is somehow getting stuck at the very top. So I'm gonna try another trick. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take this uh, outer cable housing again. As it's kind of stiff, I'm gonna be able, or should be able to push this up through here quite easily up to the bottom bracket area. Let's see, there we go. So here we have it. Now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a little bit of tape, take the end plug and attach it to the outer cable housing. And now I should be able to just pull this through without too much effort. There we go. Simple as that. So now we can take the battery, attach the two cables to it. We now should actually be able to play around with the shifters. Sounds good to me. That seems to be working already. So now let's put this into the seat post, put the seat post back and um, yeah, then we can continue. Okay, so we now have the seat post again. Um, we gotta basically push this and mount this in the seat post. Um, I already have this little kind of like a rubber part which kind of like grabs around the battery and then you can put it into the seat post and that kind of adds enough resistance that the battery isn't rattling around or moving anywhere. If you don't have one of this, what I was doing before is I was just taking a bunch of a bunch of bubble wrap, wrapping it around um, the battery, putting some electrical tape around it and then basically pushing it in uh, into the seat post. So that works equally well. But as we have this, I'm gonna use that one now. pretty good so now this isn't going anywhere and now we can basically just um, push the cables back into the frame and there you go let me put the little stopper in here this little piece that you basically put in there to um, yeah basically to fixate the seat post let's flip the frame around again so next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna press in the bottom bracket. Um, this one is uh, EVO 386. So for this, I'm having a token ninja bottom bracket, which is basically one of the ones that basically just screws together in the center from both sides. Um, it comes with this little tool, which is quite handy. So you basically stick this through and with this tool, you're gonna be able to basically screw it together and it compresses basically into the tool kind of on its own. 
but before we push in the bottom bracket to avoid any creaks and also to of course avoid any water getting in here we're gonna nicely grease this up same thing from the other side so now let's screw in that bottom bracket place one end here place the other side on the other side of the frame start start pressing it together with this little tool here now we can start by hand tightening it as far as we can and then the last part we're going to use that little tool here okay that's good enough and the great thing with this token bottom bracket is that it comes with a bunch of adapters. Um, so depending on what kind of spindle diameter you're going to be using, if you're using a, a SRAM uh, or a Shimano spindle, I'm going to be using basically a Shimano crankset, which means uh, I need a 24 millimeter diameter adapter. So you basically just click those in. There you go. Same from the other side and we're good to go. So from another bike project, I had this uh, Jura Ace R9000 crank set flying around. So let's quickly attach this. So all everything here starts looking like a proper bike. Before we push this in, we of course, as always, gonna grease this up a little bit. And then we're gonna push this through. Okay, we see it is scratching somewhere here, so there needs to go a spacer in between the bottom bracket and the crank set. Luckily, in that token bottom bracket set, there have been a bunch of spacers, so let's get them out. This is how these spacers look like. Basically, just gonna take one of them and put them on top of the spindle and push it through the bottom bracket and see if it's now a better fit. Yeah, that's now not scratching anything anymore. Fantastic. Here on the other side, we're just gonna attach the crank arm. And you see there's this little tab up here, which we can push in. There you go. And now we can't really take the crank off. So it's a little security measure kind of, I mean, I wouldn't really rely on it, but it's just there that in case the screws from the crank arm get loose that you don't run into the risk or you reduce the risk of the crank arm actually falling off. Then there's this little compression plug. So that goes on here and you screw this in. There is a little tool for this as well, a little Shimano tool that makes it easier to screw this in, but you can also just put your finger in and kind of screw it in this way. But as we have the tool, we're gonna use it. And this now presses the crank arm against the bottom brackets. Everything's nice and tight. And now we're gonna tighten up those two bolts. Okay, so these bolts need to be fairly tight. There's also a sticker on it here that still says that they need to be torqued to 12 to 40 Newton meters. So we're gonna go to 12. So we're gonna start with this side. Go. There we go. Let's check this side again. Okay, done. So one final thing that's now left in terms uh, to the crank set and this about adjusting the front derailleur height to um, the crank set of that size. And this one is a 53 outer ring. So yeah, let's adjust the front derailleur height to um, that crank set size. So now you see there's this little sticker on here, which has um, the little teeth of the crank set drawn onto it. And now what we basically got to do is we have to move the front derailleur up as far that basically the teeth in the picture align with the teeth of the crank set. So let me quickly do this. That looks about right. 
you also have to make sure that it's properly aligned and in parallel to, um, to the crank set. So it's kind of hard to see, but we want this line and this line basically to be in parallel with, um, yeah, with the outer chain ring. And that already looks pretty good. Move it a little bit out like this. Okay. As you see, that when we move it to the outside, it kind of collides with um, with the front derailleur cage. So that's something that we'll have to set up in the app and in the configuration of um, the front derailleur. As you might notice from my outfit, it is the next day. Um, reviewing the footage, I also noticed that I'm saying okay a lot whenever um, I'm getting into a new scene. So um, to stay consistent, okay. So today and now we're gonna start looking into bleeding the disc brakes. So that's the next topic we're gonna do. So let's get started. For this, we're gonna need a couple of more tools. There's gonna be this syringe with um, a little thread underneath it. Um, I looked at the specification of this. I basically, I had a Shimano bleed kit, um, but the Shimano bleed kit basically is just um, a little tube that you just push over uh, the bleed port on the actual brakes. This one requires a little thread or these brakes require a little thread. So I just purchased um, the bleed set for SRAM and I noticed that um, this one fits. And then we're gonna have this little cup here at the top, which is actually from the Shimano bleed kit, which is gonna go on top of the shifter. Also in regards to the fluid that's in here, we're gonna use um, Shimano mineral oil. This is what it says on um, the AliExpress site and advertisement that this brake system is compatible with the Shimano mineral oil, which is great because I had that already at home because I was using it for my um, Shimano Durace disc brake setup. So we're gonna start with the rear brake. So for this, we move this over here. We're gonna peel back the hood. And there's a little screw, one called, one labeled with uh, air, one labeled with mineral oil. As we need to fill in mineral oil, we're gonna unscrew the one that says mineral oil. Open that up. Let's make sure to um, put that little screw somewhere aside where we don't lose it. Now, here at the top, we're gonna put our little funnel. We screw this in, it is a plastic thread, so only finger tight, doesn't need to be super tight. And we're gonna add a little bit of mineral oil in here. Now, we're gonna uh, fill up the syringe again with some mineral oil and attach it to the rear brake. So first of all, we gotta get rid of uh, the brake pads. So for this, we're gonna unscrew this little screw here that's holding in the brake pads. And let's now pull out the screw. And let's remove the brake pads. Let's make sure to not touch the brake surfaces with anything um, oily, like your fingers or any, um, especially any brake fluid. Now, we're gonna add this brake block, which was part of my uh, of the Shimano bleed kit. We're gonna add this in between. So basically, the pistons that are sitting in the brake are gonna have some resistance and are not gonna be pushed out too far. There we go. That's good enough. We don't necessarily need to screw it in. It just needs to be held in place. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go now open up that bleed port up here. Get that screw out. Also put it in some safe space. And now we can attach our syringe. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing right now is first we're gonna open up the little plunger in here, in that little funnel. So basically that oil can be pushed into it and we're gonna be pushing oil in from the rear brake all the way through the system up into the handlebars and up into the shifter. 
um, with the aim to push out all potential air bubbles that are sitting in the system. So let's do this. What's important here that we're holding this um, vertically so that basically all air bubbles uh, are sitting at the top of the syringe. So just to make sure that we're not pushing any new air bubbles into the system. And then while pushing here, we monitor what's happening in the little container. We see if there are any air bubbles coming out. There are some and we keep pushing, keep pushing until we see no more air bubbles in the system. What always helps, bang a little bit against the frame to shaken up any potential air bubbles. Then push a little bit more. Yep, yeah, one or two more came through. There you go, that's nice. Move the lever a little bit. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be pulling in um, so basically I'm just going to be pulling on that syringe, trying to um, move oil from here through the system back here, just in case there are some small um, air bubbles sitting more towards this end of the system. And um, yeah, I think then if everything goes well, we should be almost done with the rear brake. So let me pull a little bit. We see there are some small air bubbles coming. Not too many, which is a good sign. We can push the brake lever a little bit to push anything, any air, potential air bubbles through, loosen them up. And once more, we're gonna push that liquid back into the system. So now what are we gonna do? We're gonna remove the rear syringe, uh, close it off, and then um, start squeezing the brake lever in the front a little bit and hope that we're getting a little bit of resistance. Okay. Okay, not too tight. I think it says something between one and a half, one and a half and two newton meters, which is not much tighter than finger tight. So now you're gonna be pushing that lever and we see there is already some nice resistance coming through here. So we keep on pushing and this way it's sucking up a little bit of that oil from here back into the system. Yeah, that looks pretty good. There's already some good resistance here. As you see, they're already engaging, I don't know, let's say one and a half or two centimeters into the travel. So I think that is looking pretty promising. So now we're gonna do the same thing with uh, the front brake. But first of all, we gotta put that plunger back in. And now we can unscrew this little container here. Put it in a safe space that doesn't spill the oil that's inside. We're gonna like drop that little screw in here. And we're gonna screw it in. Also just finger tight nothing crazy and we're going to clean off all the excess oil that's floating on top here there we go now we can close the hood cover looking good front brake next Now we do the same thing, open up the plunger and now start pushing oil through from the bottom. So small update on um, the front brake. I had a little bit of an issue that I was pushing, trying to push oil through, through the caliper up in here and uh, nothing worked. So it was just a bunch of resistance here. Um, and it turned out there is a tiny little screw here in the very front of the shifter with which you can adjust kind of the preload of whenever this is engaging with the brake and um, it seems for whatever reason that I don't really understand is when it's pushed in a little bit too far this was somehow preloading I guess the brake and not allowing me to push any of the air bubbles through so what I've done now off camera because I was dealing with this for like half an hour right now um, 
is that I unscrewed this screw almost to the max and then was pushing, pushing all through this way until at some moment a big splash of oil hit me and my shirt and my face, um, which turns out uh, was a massive air bubble in the system. So I hope that now I can uh, continue pushing things through, then I'm gonna switch out my shirt um, and then we can continue. Oh, that is looking good. Okay, so what I'm gonna try now, I'm gonna remove the syringe in the back, put in um, the screw and hope that once I push this one down, I'm gonna uh, meet some nice resistance. Okay, finger tight. So now let's see. Let's keep, make sure the plunge is open. There's still no resistance here. So something, something's still not right. One eternity later. So it actually does work. So off camera, I had a little bit of a moment, let's say, because I thought that I'm not gonna make this work. I thought that this left shifter is broken somehow. I wasn't able to get any resistance on it uh, while bleeding it. I was able to push air out through the hose and I've seen bubbles coming up here as you've seen them. Um, but still, I couldn't get it to work. Uh, I even like disassembled it. I checked the olives. I thought, hey, maybe the olive wasn't crushed pro properly enough. Maybe I used an olive that didn't work. Maybe I mixed it up with something else. I even took it completely off. I tried, um, I tried another brake caliper that I had. Um, also with that, it didn't work. So it was coming down to this. So then I just put on some series on TV. I um, got some fresh brake hose, short one, connected it to a brake and basically just kept pumping for half an hour. And I think after some intense pumping, something happened and it squeezed. I heard like some air being squeezed out. Um, and yeah, suddenly it worked. So I just bled it properly, pushed all the air out, uh, attached it, of course, attached it to the bike again. And um, yeah, now, now we're good. So um, yeah, that wasn't the simplest thing to do. I actually didn't, don't remember that, having that with any of my Shimano uh, setups so far. So maybe I was just unlucky with this one. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, in case you're running into this issue, don't get frustrated. Don't think that something is broken right away. I mean, one of the main points was to screwing this uh, this adjustment screw all the way out, um, but not so far out that it falls out, but all the way out so that you can actually properly squeeze um, the liquid through the system. Um, but as that didn't work, I, um, yeah, I kind of like took it off. But I think if I would have just stood here and pumped it for a while, I might have come to the same result. So if you're running into this issue, give this a try, like, it, it takes a while um, and I felt that just something needed to happen. Maybe some bubble needed to like move through the system because I felt that it was more up here than in the rest of the system because I swapped out the rest of the system. Um, yeah, so don't get too frustrated. You might get it to work with a little bit more time and a little bit more effort. So now that we have this done, let's um, start working on some finishing touches. So next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put on the saddle, then we're gonna put on the wheels, um, we're gonna center the brakes, we're gonna put on the chain, and then it's gonna be about um, adjusting front and rear derailleur, indexing the gears, so some fun stuff coming up. So let's get started. So for this, we're gonna mount hopefully quickly my uh, favorite saddle, which I'm having on um, all of my other bikes which is the Pro Logo Dimension 143. So yeah, let's put it on. The nice thing with this seat post and this mount is that, of course, you got the mount here, but then you can also unscrew two little screws up here and shift the whole thing uh, front and back. So um, I guess we're gonna need that once we do like a little bit of a bike fit later on. Be able to fit it in here now. Yep, there we go. It's in here and it's in here. Fantastic. So now we can torque it up roughly at least because we don't know exactly where the saddle needs to go. Okay, good for now. So next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put uh, the brake pads into the brakes and then uh, put the wheels on. And I think we're gonna do the chain next. 
So before I can get the brake pads in, let me first get that bleed block out of here in the front. Okay, so just real quick, after all the mess with um, bleeding those brakes, there's a bunch of hydraulic fluid all over them. So let me just quickly degrease them with some brake cleaner. Same thing in the rear. Because last thing we want to do is have brand new brakes and uh, contaminate the brake pads or the rotors right away from the get-go. So now we can put in the brake pads, stick the screw through. There you go. Tighten it. And then same thing in the rear. Here we got to take the screw out, put the brake pads in and slide the screw back into the brake caliper. Okay, that's done. Now let's slot in the wheels. Slot in the wheels, we need to take the through axles out real quick first. So let's do that. So here we got some nice brand new 50 millimeter deep section Yolio carbon wheels. Um, yeah, I'm gonna talk about them a little bit later, but now um, let's assemble them. Slot this one in here. Into, into the rotor and give me the through axle and we screw in the through axle with it says 12 newton meters I've, I've threaded in so many through axles already that I'm just gonna make it by feel because 12 newton meters is pretty tight slot it in here into the brake caliper. There you go. Through axle goes through. Again, 12 newton meters. If you want to take a torque wrench, feel free to do so, of course, just to be on the safe side. Okay. We hear that the rear disc rotor isn't properly centered, but we're gonna do that later anyways. Front, obviously, same problem. So now we're gonna fit the chain. The way how, how I'm doing it is um, I'm switching the rear derailleur to the biggest sprocket, the front derailleur to the biggest chain ring, and um, then fitting the chain this way, trying to figure out how long it needs to be with um, the rear cage extending quite a bit. And um, yes, then we're gonna break the chain, put in the quick link, and then we're good to go. So let's switch the rear derailleur into the biggest sprocket. So all the way in. There you go. Front derailleur is already on the outer one. Let me remove that little sticker here. First, I'm gonna put the chain on here. Guide it through. Then we are putting it on the big sprocket here. Starting to wrap it around. Then we take it onto the first jockey wheel. And then we slowly guide it through the cage, pulling it onto the second jockey wheel, just twist the jockey wheel to, to guide it through. There we go. That looks pretty good. So let me see. I feel that we can still shorten it a little bit, but not by too much. I mean, maybe it could even be fine with just putting in the quick link here rather than here, uh, maybe, oh, but maybe. Maybe we don't actually need to shorten it. So let's go with that length first. Let's see how it's gonna work because we can shorten it always. And um, I guess extending it is not as easy as shortening it. The quick links also have a little arrow uh, on, the, on the side showing you uh, the moving direction of the chain and how they should be mounted as the chain is moving into this direction here on the bottom. We're also gonna put one in this way on this end and towards the back on this side. Then we're gonna pull them together. Try to hang them into each other. There we go. And now you need one of these, which are basically there to stretch the chain out 
and lock the quick link. Oh, there we go. So now it's gonna be time to uh, center the disc brakes. That I somehow forgot to bring with me on this trip, so we gotta go old school. I'm basically just gonna put a piece of cardboard on left, on the left hand and on the right hand side of uh, the disc, pull the brake, try to center it this way and then um, tighten the mounting screws of uh, the brake itself. And then hopefully once we take the cardboard pieces out, nothing is gonna be scratching. Let's see. Let me try to sneak in that cardboard on this side and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. It's not so easy without touching the rotor itself. So we're now gonna push together the brake, see if anything is moving here. Make sure that these screws are loose enough that the brake itself can move around. It seems to be the case. So we pull this together and now slowly tighten those screws. Now we're gonna take the paper out, or the cardboard out, without touching the rotor. There we go. There we go. Fantastic. Job done. So now we're gonna do the same thing in the rear. So we're gonna try to squeeze in a piece of cardboard in between the rotor and the pads. Touching off the rotor. So here as well, let's make sure that the brake can move around. We're gonna pull the brake in the front. Now I'm pulling the brake and we're gonna be slowly tightening those screws. Let's try it already. Let's pull out the paper. Nice one. No rubbing. It was way easier than I thought it would be. So I would say now the fun part is about to start because now I'm very interested in how well indexed uh, this rear and front derailleur is coming already out of the box. In the rear I'm using um, a Shimano Tegra 11 speed cassette. So um, yeah, let's see um, how this is working. By the way, you can also switch the rear derailleur or the whole setup um, to work as a 12 speed, uh, like 2x12 speed group set or a 2x11 speed group set. You can do all of this in the app. We're gonna have a look at the app in a second, but I already set it up to be 11 speed as I'm having an 11 speed cassette on that uh, wheel anyways. Let's give it a try how it works out of the box. It is rubbing a little bit on the front derailleur, but we can check that in a second. So let's check out the rear derailleur. Up, down, up. One down. Here it is jumpy a little bit. Up. Okay, and back up. Okay, so back up it works kind of nicely. Down it uh, it has a little bit of, uh, of a hiccup here and there. So um, let's pull out the app and let's give it a little bit of a tweak. Okay, as you see here in the app, I can basically switch gears from here as well. And it looks like, like I can do individual adjustment per gear. So let's say we're happy with this one, but then we jump one down and here we get a little bit of a click. So let's try to play around with the adjustment. Wrong direction, I guess. Okay, now we got rid of that click. Let's jump to the next one. Also jumped one down, so... 
Let's get rid of that click. Okay, looks good. Next one. We have a little bit of a click here as well, so it's also adjusted in the same direction. Click is gone. Next one. Same problem. Okay, let's try the next one. Also a little bit of a click. Okay, let's try the next one. Same thing. Okay, next one. Oh, from time to time there's a little click. So we give it a little nudge. Same. Yep, same here. And one further down. Let's push this one up a little bit as well. Okay, so now let's try to jump back. Clean. Clean. That's looking really good. Let's switch down again. Still a little bit of a click, so that's course correct. Okay, let's go back and jump back down. Nice. Down. Nice. Down. A little bit of a click here as well, so let's push it a little further up. Next one. Next one. Also a little bit of a click, so let's push it a little further as well here. Okay, next one. Next one. Next one. Next one. Next one. The clicking that we just heard was coming from the front derailleur. So let's quickly adjust that next and then we can do a whole system check. There we go. Just slightly towards the outside. There we go. And tighten it back up again. That should be good. Now we can get back to fine tuning. Okay, so now let's see. Still rubbing a little bit, I can hear it. So let's play around with the adjustment again. Let's come a little bit more out. Can see it rubbing on the inside. Oh. That sounds great. No rubbing. Fantastic. Okay, so let's try to switch into the small gear and do the small chain ring. Okay, so I'm kind of glad that that happened. So now we obviously see there isn't enough. There isn't enough, no, enough chain tension here. So let's see if we have to shorten the chain or there is an adjustment screw here which allows us to move the rear derailleur out and position it a little bit differently and this way introduce some chain tension. So let's see if that's going to be good enough or if we have to shorten the chain. So let's give it a try. Which size is it? This one. So moving it out. See there's a little bit of stretch Coming in, there we go. I think that should be enough. I mean, you shouldn't be using the smallest cog in the uh, small chain ring in the front anyways, but of course your chain shouldn't be dropped or you shouldn't damage or scratch your frame whenever you do this. So that already looks good. Let's see if we can switch back to the big ring. Back to small ring. Back to the big ring. And I can do the small ring. Pretty nice. Let's do a final checkup. Okay, final gear switching test. Let me see. I'm gonna fit through here. Voila. Okay, so now we're in the small chain ring in the front. Let's see how we can switch. Up, 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 
up, up, up, up, up, up, and down. Oh, well, up again, down, up again, down, 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 down. Pretty good. So let's do the same thing on the big chain ring. So let's switch up to the big chain ring here. That's looking good. And now up, 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 up. Very good. Down, 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 and down. Great. I think uh, this performs quite nicely. So I gotta say, I'm really impressed with um, how this ERX group set indexed. Um, it's very straightforward, as you've seen. What I really, really liked is that you can do um, the offset adjustment per um, per gear, um, basically per sprocket in the rear as well, compared to DI2. On DI2, I only remember that you can do like an overall shift um, for this thing. But um, here it felt more, way more convenient because I also know I have another bike. I actually have an AliExpress cassette on my other bike with DI2. And um, sometimes with those AliExpress lightweight cassettes, they're not exactly the same. And maybe the spacing isn't exactly equal. Um, so sometimes with some gears, uh, the DI2 is having some issues uh, switching between them. But with this kind of logic, you can like very nicely and cleanly adjust every single gear. And yeah, I thought, I think it's a genius idea. So I'm surprised that uh, Shimano doesn't really have that. So yeah, I gotta say so far so good. Let's quickly put um, some bottle cages on it. Then we can do the bar tape and then we're pretty much done. So I'm having some of those um, beautiful carbon cheap uh, AliExpress bottle cages flying around. So uh, this is what we're gonna be mounting here now. Looking good. So let's say time for bar tape now. Before putting out the bar tape though, uh, we might remember that we didn't uh, fully fix those screws here so we can like move things still around. Now is the time to fix those screws. So we just have a look um, where that shifter is positioned. So I have one, two, three, there's another one, the fourth one between here. And the fifth one is exactly in between those brackets. So this is where we're gonna mount it. And then we're gonna adjust the right hand one to be in the exact same position. So we're just gonna reach for that screw. And now let's tighten that screw. Okay, that's good. So small interesting fact about bar tape. Um, I was shopping on AliExpress when I was ordering the, the group set and I found um, some bar tape that looks very similar like the Supercast uh, bar tape, which I'm a really big fan of. I mean, I've bought like tons of their bar tape, but it is quite pricey. And um, I wanted to keep this one on a budget and I thought, oh, it looks like Supercast. Maybe it's nice and cushy. And uh, what shows up in the mail? I mean, weird. But uh, yeah, let's put it on. So now let's wrap that bar tape. Okay, so once we get up here, now I'm gonna cheat a little bit, cover this area up with a little piece of bar tape. There we go. Now we keep wrapping right up here at the bottom and come up. And now we start wrapping the top. Here we also see this doesn't really have the the supercast um, the supercast logo on it. Um, I mean, it has it kind of printed on it, but normally the original has it um, kind of like engraved, so you kind of feel it. Okay. So 
this is more like some premium electrical tape kind of gonna do the same thing with the left one now and then i think it's time for a test ride So just to finish off the bar tape chapter, we gotta put in the bar end plugs and then we're good to go with that. Then we're gonna tighten the screws um, for the stem, align it everything of course with the wheel and then, then we can finally do the test ride. Okay, so now what's left is uh, tightening up the bolts of uh, the stem. Before we do that, we need to align that the handlebars are really 100% straight with the wheel. That looks good. And now let's tighten those bolts here. I'm gonna be tightening them to four Newton meters a little bit higher than four let's say we go with five newton meters good let's see if it's fixed enough yeah i cannot move it anymore by hand so fantastic so now it's really time for a test ride i'm just quickly gonna roughly adjust uh, the seat post to my height and then yeah i'll see you outside So, I'm out on the first ride with my Yolio R12 again. This time for the first time with the L2 ERX group set. And I'm positively surprised. I mean, it shifts very smoothly. No misshifts so far. So yeah, first impressions, solid. So now I really know why um, this bike was my favorite last year. So now after riding it again, I can really see that I missed it quite a bit. Um, rides amazing, it just fits like a glove. Then yeah, the new uh, Yoleo stem and aero handlebar combo, way easier to set up than the integrated handlebar. Um, I mean, you've seen it, went all pretty smooth, very easy, no mental breakdowns here. And I think it actually looks quite nice as well. So I mean, even for the slight weight penalty, it's definitely an option in case you want to go for low maintenance uh, for a low maintenance option here. Also when traveling, I think it's always easier to have multiple components here that when you're putting it into a bike case that you can take the handlebars off without uh, having to take the stem off and yeah, put the puzzle pieces in the case uh, properly together. And also to touch on the L2 ERX system, I mean, of course, I had the issue with the front shifter and getting the hydraulic brakes set up there, but could have also just been bad luck. Other than that, I'm really positively impressed and surprised. Um, also just from a feel and from a haptic perspective, the hoods feel really good. They're nice and slim, but pretty high, so your hands are nicely stopped from slipping over them. The click interaction and the feedback that you're getting from uh, from the buttons is very close to a DI2 system, so I'm very familiar with that. When it comes to braking performance, I mean, I was only riding it for half an hour, so the brakes are definitely not worn in yet, but they definitely feel safe, they feel powerful, and the upside is that you can also put in the original Shimano brake pads in there, so they're compatible uh, with those brake calipers, which I think is great, so maybe I'll do some A-B testing in the future. Then the shifting itself is fantastic, I have to say. I really, really like the idea of being able to program each and individual sprocket and the offset there feels way more precise than doing this uh, on a shimano system also on the front big ring to small ring absolutely no problem smooth shifting and even on my ride out i mean it was only half an hour but didn't have any miss shifts no surprises there so um, yeah so far so good very positively impressed and of course in case anything would change during my next rides i'll uh, report back to you
One of the downsides with the L2 system are these uh, brake adapters. I mean, they aesthetically don't really look that great. Um, but to be honest, after they're mounted on the bike, I don't really notice them that much as I thought I would while uh, building it up. So yeah, I think this was an exciting little project of uh, setting up a carbon superbike out of um, yeah non-mainstream bike parts. And uh, yeah, so if you're interested in these kind of things or have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. If you have any detailed questions in regards to the group set or the frame, also let me know. So one thing that's left is uh, to do a very quick free hub sound check of those new Yolio wheels because they also have a ratchet system in there. And I gotta say, they're very, very loud. So if that's your thing, definitely have a look at those wheels. If you are more into silent hubs, absolutely no go but i kind of appreciate them because i'm not having a bell on my bike and uh, during the test ride yesterday i had a bunch of people just cycling side by side next to each other on a rather narrow bike lane and yeah just free rolling for a second that definitely cleared the path quite quickly so quick free up sound check So again, thanks a lot for watching. This was a very long one. I think maybe the longest episode that I've done so far. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Maybe subscribe if you're not yet and you're interested in that kind of content. Drop a comment and uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye.